It is most unusual for a United States Navy ship to be named for a living person. But on January 10, 2001, then Secretary of the Navy Richard Danzig made a rare departure from tradition. He named the 44th ship of the Arleigh Burke class of guided missile destroyers in honor of Paul H. Nitze. What you want to do in naming a ship is to celebrate a spirit and provide a model both for sailors on that ship, but also more broadly for the Navy and more broadly beyond that for people in the nation as a whole. Secretary, I'd like to introduce Mike Haggerty. Yes, He's the commanding officer of the ship. The captain and the XO got to spend time with him, talk to him. They've made it part of the legacy of the ship to talk about what would Paul Nitza do if he were here. They have implanted his standards on their own high standards and the, own, and the Navy's own high standards for the ship. Paul Nitza was a spirit that I wanted us to emulate. He had, over so many years, contributed so much that it became very attractive to, uh, to me to name a ship after him. Paul Nitza helped shape U.S. policy for almost half a century. He was an advisor to eight presidents, from Franklin D. Roosevelt to Ronald Reagan. Appointed by President Kennedy in 1963, Nitsa served as Secretary of the Navy until 1967. During these difficult years, he greatly improved the quality of life for sailors and Marines. He did amazing things with enlisted folks, realizing that the biggest weapon system in our Navy is our troops, our sailors, our soldiers. In those days, it was pretty grim if you were a young enlisted sailor, and, and he really worked hard on, on bettering their lot. The Marines and, and sailors that served while he was Secretary of the Navy saw amazing improvements in quality of life. And that was all through his efforts and realizing that that's where you, you really build your military powers through the, through the people that, that fight for our nation. That was the impression within the Navy. Uh, it took a while for them to get to know him, but after that they, they would have followed him any place, and I, I certainly would have. In 1985, President Reagan awarded Nitsa the Medal of Freedom. Paul is now playing an indispensable role in our efforts to forge a bold and creative arms control policy. They had awarded him the Medal of Freedom, but I think they were looking for a way to just truly recognize this guy, and, and this is why they named a ship after him. Every ship we would like to think is infused with the spirit of the person who it's named after, but in this case, uh, almost uniquely, it really was built in the presence of the person it was named after, and that's, that's a very rare thing. And then I noticed the coincidence that he was coming to his 94th birthday, and this was DDG-94. Uh, and that seemed too delicious to turn down. I got a phone call from Richard Danzig. He called and asked me if I could keep a secret. And I said, what sort of secret? And he said, I'm going to name a ship for Paul. He was well known as a man who foresaw things. So to be able to surprise him in that way was excellent. He and Lizzie Porter went up together to Bath uh, some four or five times while the ship was being built and actually met with the people who were building the ship. We went and we were shown the first parts of the ship. They had completed the stern. It had Nitsa written on the back of it. And when Paul was driven in, we noticed that it was very, very silent. And I looked and I saw that the builders were looking at Paul. After all, they built ships for people who were no longer alive. All the workers went up to him and shook his hand and, and were just very proud to be working on his ship. He has a high respect for the men and women in the shipbuilding business. And men and women who built the ship in Maine are just an incredible group of human beings. To have an opportunity to meet them, to see who the welders were who were working on his ship, to watch the way that they were building the ship with Paul in mind, the legacy of Nitsa is written all over that ship. And the welcome they gave him and the trouble they went to each time we went to visit made him so happy. He smiled 
he, he kissed the hands of the beautiful ladies, and he had an absolutely wonderful time. And, and the whole visit culminated on the, on the folks over up there, and I'm, I'm holding him in the wheelchair, and the XO's up there, and all the workers were all on top, and they all did three cheers for him, you know, hip, hip, hooray, and it sounds corny, but at the time, it was very, very moving. There were almost a thousand shipyard workers lining the superstructure all the way up. Paul got a tear in his eye. This was not a man who got a tear in his eye very easily. He was deeply, deeply touched by the men and women giving him such a wonderful salute. He looked up from his wheelchair and he said, make sure she floats. That was not meant to be disrespectful in any way. That was Paul Nitz's sense of humor. And the advice that he gave me is, is things that actually match up with his life. Be the best is what he said. And, and if you know anything about him, he spent his whole life being the best. And, you know, mediocrity was unsatisfactory. You know, be the best, be ready to fight. And hearing it from a guy that the ship is named after and I'm sitting there two feet away from him kind of motivates you. It's kind of inspiring. The keel laying ceremony is when you actually lay the first piece of steel down in the shipyard that the rest of the ship gets built around and they make it a kind of a special occasion and the uh, there's a welder that puts the initials PHN for Paul Henry Nitza and actually welded them in and the keel is regarded as the backbone of the ship so it's kind of a special thing. The mast stepping is a terrific and significant ceremony. It represents putting coins under the mast of a ship to guarantee safe passage for those on board should the ship sink. And we had coins representing every significant part of his life. We also invited the builders of the ship, the men and women who were building the ship, and we invited the executives from General Dynamics to add coins to the mast, and they did as well. So we got all the coins together, and Paul's great-grandson, Jamie Nitza, age 14, put the Nitza coins representing his great-grandfather into the mast. The events had a, a special kind of warmth because there was such a direct connection with Paul as a, as a person. The ship was christened April 17, 2004. Couldn't ask for a nicer day. I can't think of anything better than any medal you can get or something like that to have a ship in, with your name on it. Cruising around the world is a great, great tribute to a great man. Paul Nitza spent his career building military strength. He didn't build military strength because he wanted to use that strength to go to war. He built military strength so that we could be strong enough to keep the peace around the world. So I chose my words carefully. For his commitment to world peace through military strength, I dedicate this ship in the name of my husband, Paul H. Nitza. God bless the Nitsa and God bless the men and women who will sail on her. He had him draped with a, with a blanket bearing the ship's crest and just the excitement in his eyes. It was really, really great to see him there watching his, his ship be named for him. And again, it was just it was an awesome thing to have Paul Nitsa sitting there watching this whole thing and it was very moving. Seven months after the christening ceremony, Paul Nitza passed away on October 19, 2004. He was 97. The crew members of the USS Nitza not only lost their namesake, but also a friend and mentor. His funeral was held at the Washington Cathedral. 28 sailors from the USS Nitza were present. Eight of them were his pallbearers. His legacy will always be there in the ship because of the men and women who carry his legacy on as time goes on. Having known him and seen him and seen the things he's done, it, it really makes it, it's almost like a cornerstone on which I can build the, the training philosophy for the ship. Okay. Secretary Nitz's legacy is, is a philosophical point that I can pass on to the sailors here as 
if you can't find some other reason to do the right thing on board and make sure you're as trained and as, as capable as you can be, look at that and say, I'm out here to keep the world a better place and uphold freedom for, the, for all Americans. We have a, a very nice portrait of him down in the wardroom. And, uh, and, and, and you can almost see his character in his face. And we always kind of joke in the wardroom that he's looking at us and we better stop messing around and get back to work because, you know, he's sort of watching us. And, uh, and everybody's a little bit afraid of letting him down, you know. So, so personally, it, it's been good for me as a commanding officer because not only does it motivate me personally, but he's allowed me to help motivate the crew using him as sort of a rallying point of we can't let Paul Nitza down. We have to serve his memory well. This ship has to honor him in everything that it does, and it will not tolerate anything but the best. The commissioning is an opportunity for a lot of people to pay tribute to the ship's namesake, Paul Nitza, and the crew, and it ends with the, the ship coming to life. Executive officer, set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. Officer to the deck, set the watch. All the systems are, are activated, uh, directors spin around, engines are started, whistle sounded, and uh, you see excitement in the eyes of the sailors as they run aboard their ship for the first time. It's an opportunity for all those who have seen, gone through the shipbuilding process and the training process and bringing the ship out and making sure everything works. It, it's kind of like the end of that process and the start of the ship's life. Executive officer, hoist the colors and the commissioning pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Admiral Hamilton, United States ship NHTSA is in commission, and I have assumed command. Well, the commissioning ceremony, the, uh, the ship actually comes to life. In fact, those words are used, make the ship come alive. And in this case, those words are uttered by Lizzie Porter. And that's when the ship is no longer, like we're no longer a pre-commissioned ship, where we are a United States Navy ship. And it was just a very, very fulfilling day. Officers and crew of United States ship NHTSA, man our ship and bring her to life. We're disappointed that he wasn't there for it, but what we have seen is that his spirit lives on this ship in a way that I've never seen before. As we sailed down the river, off on our starboard side, flying alongside us for maybe about half a mile, was a lone bald eagle. Beautiful. Just, you didn't even need binoculars. I mean, it was right there. It was right off the starboard side, and it just kind of hung there for a couple of seconds. And we're sitting on the bridge of the ship with the captain, me, and some of our senior officers. And I think it was Admiral Hamilton who first looked over and said, there's a bald eagle over there. And everyone kind of focused their attention and watched this eagle fly along with us. And we all kind of looked at it, and everybody kind of thought the same exact thing. That's Paul Nitsa coming back to check on his ship. 